I'm ready. <laughs> you really ready for this? Sure. Yeah? Okay. All right. So we're in uh, Probable Cause DTSB's uh, world headquarters here at a place to remain, remain nameless. They uh, not only can flight safety not find it, but uh, the and NTSB either. They yeah. don't, they're not even aware of this location. So. Jennifer's been sending me an email, so I'm not telling her where, where this is. Yeah, so she's not going to trace your phone. <laughs> Probably already has. Or your email IP address or anything like that. Anyway, stick with me on Flywires. We're going to uh, do an investigation of her. Hey, I'm Scott Perdue, and today on Flywire, uh, we're going to talk to Dan, uh, uh, what's your name again? Frinkelmeyer. Frinkelmeyer. Dan Ryder Frinkelmeyer. And uh, we're at the Probable Cause World Headquarters, and we're going to touch on a few things. One of the things is, to my interest, really, is DC-3 training. You may not know this, but Dan actually flies airplanes instead of, uh, you know, Rex Rexham? <laughs> in cornfields. Yeah, but... So many cornfields, so little time. So little time, yeah. So not enough 150s either. I'm writing so. a book, Cornfields in America. <laughs> you know, Up people, close and personal. Yeah. There's a lot of unrespected cornfields in America that I think pilots should know about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the ones that actually use uh, regular manure instead of uh, yeah. chemicals. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I staged that whole thing. Yeah. Um, I got together with Trevor Jacobs, and we decided that I'd go first. I, I flipped the 150 upside down on purpose just for views. <laughs> I don't think so. I actually saw it happen. And, Were you uh, there? Yeah. I, I mean, did you, did you I watched it. And, oh. and no, it was not on purpose. But anyway, I digress. That's actually not what I want to talk about. Okay. What I wanted to talk about was, uh, you may not know this, but he does DC-3 training. He has a DC-3 that uh, he does training in. If you want to learn, get your second in command rating, then you can come fly with Dan. Or, Tell me about it. yeah, and I appreciate the, uh, the, the plug on that. The, the, the DC-3, I've had it 22 years, and it's a labor of love. That thing <laughs> a, is... A big labor. It's a big airplane. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of time and, and a lot of money getting greasy, keeping it going. The only way I can keep it going on a break-even basis just to keep her alive is by selling training. So I sell either SIC, second-in-command type ratings, or VFR only PIC type ratings, or full PIC type ratings. I also do the type ratings in jets. Uh, I can do your type rating in any of the 500 series citation. Uh, but I also ferry airplanes, move airplanes, turbo props, and warbirds and stuff like that. So Yeah, but you're talking about stuff I didn't want to know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is an advertisement for... That's what I do. That's what I do for a living. But the DC-3 has been a, a really good bread and butter. That thing has... has there's always interest in the DC-3. Three such a cool airplane. It's a, it's a classic... Uh, airplane. Is this a pretty much standard airplane, 800 gallons? Yeah, oh yeah. Two yeah. crowns. Everything's standard on it. It's it's all piston. Uh, I do also some stuff in the turbine DC-3. I instruct in those on occasion as well. But this one, yeah, you can come in and fly the DC-3. So this weekend I got three more knuckleheads coming in town. They've got no particular reason for being here. They'll never use it. They'll never use their training. They just want to fly it, get their picture taken, get it stamped on their license. And I put everybody in the left seat. I've never met any one of the three. I don't know them, probably never see them again, but everybody gets left seat. I don't steal any of the flying. They get to take off, land, we shoot the approaches. I shut an engine down. I, I do all that stuff that you gotta do. But That's the uh, 6155, I think it is. Yep. So all the things that you have to do for an SIC rating. Yep, we do all that stuff, but I give everybody about three hours left seat. Here's an interesting fact. I've had the airplane 22 years. I've actually only flown my DC-3 from the left seat twice in 22 years. I never leave the right seat. Anytime that airplane's in the air, I got somebody else in the left seat that's wanting to fly it. So I have very little flying experience in the DC-3. I have a lot of monitoring experience. <laughs> well, when I flew the three, I actually like flying it from the right seat. I prefer it, if, even, yeah. even though I was stuck in the airplane. I prefer it because the throttle and everything is on in my left hand and I can do the flaps. Yep. So it got to the point where if the guy's not doing great, I can still fly. Yeah, absolutely. The right seat is definitely my home. But uh, And even uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff lately with private pilots, single engine. If you just want to come in and fly the DC-3, you can rent it by the hour. You can fly it an hour or two or we go to dinner or you shoot approaches or touch and goes, bounce and goes. So you have to have 
at least a private pilot's license for single, don't need multi, you have to have some kind of a medical, you have to have a heartbeat and a visa card. And if you've got those, you're in. That's all it takes. And it's a lot of fun. I mean, those people come in and the biggest thing they've ever flown is a 172 and all of a sudden their left seat and that thing is like, holy cow. It's pretty tremendous. So they have to have a medical, is that because you don't have one? <laughs> I don't deserve one. I've been gaining, gaining weight. I'm up to 205. This summer though, I'm on a new, I'm working on a project. I'm gonna get down to about 180 this summer. Um, I have an amazing physique. Did you know that? No. Yeah, I do. I, I don't want to know that. <laughs> I think I do. Not not anyone else. Well, it's a good thing that you think you do. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you got to have confidence in yourself. Otherwise, yeah, what the heck? That, that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, no, just a private pilot's license. You got to be. You got to be an actual pilot. I have to be able to give you dual, legitimate dual. I can't give you an airplane ride. I got to be actually training you uh, in the DC three if you want to come in. Um, and, I, and I can do that, but I require at least a pilot's license and a medical. Basic med is okay, and a heartbeat. That would be good if you were still alive when you come in. Uh, and a visa card. And, and when you leave. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but you don't have to have a tailwheel. No. And you don't have to have a multi. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people come, come in and they, they do that. They, we get the airplane out, pre-flight and go around, answer questions, take pictures, then we roll it out. I put them in the left seat from the very first takeoff. It's yours. They're always kind of interesting, especially those guys are very low time, only nose wheel guys, only private pilot. Those are so interesting because they're like, they're just astounded what that thing sounds like and feels like. It's 2,400 horsepower and it shakes your teeth out on takeoff. It's just loud. It's like, holy cow. It's amazing. It is amazing. It's an amazing airplane to fly. And the reason why I wanted to do this video is because I think sometimes you need to step out of the, outside the box. You're going to go do that $100 hamburger or same thing, same thing you've been doing for the last 50 hours, etc. You need to step outside the box, do a little training, expand your personal envelope. And the three is a great way to do it. I don't think there's anybody else doing it in the three right now. No, I'm the last Mohican standing. And the airplanes are going away. Um, I've made a lifetime of of giving people the left seat experience and I don't steal any of that. I don't care who you are. I'll put you in the left seat and let you try it. Um, it's, it's good. I'm very good with the airplane. I know the airplane very well. And I've, I've been doing this from the right seat for 22 years. Uh, flying, I have landed in a cornfield with it, but that's a different story, but, uh, <laughs> no, uh, no problems. It's, it's an easy airplane to fly. The thing's so forgiving and so graceful. It's it really, it's my favorite airplane. I, I, I'm looking forward to this weekend. I'm going to be out there tearing it up with three more knuckleheads that had no common sense that want to come in and hang out with Dan and fly the DC-3. That's all it is. All right. So have fun. All right. So well, I appreciate you coming out, Scott. Thanks for uh, swinging into the world headquarters of the DTSB Probable Cause, Dan Grider's home headquarters right here. You've got it on the screen so you can see it there. Oh, blanked out. <laughs> it's windows for you. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for uh, having me, and uh, go have fun today, uh, this weekend. Don't uh, wreck the airplane. You betcha. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> see you later. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Flight